mentioned in a previous video that I would show you all how I make my pigment paste and it's very simple. Um, I'll lead with that. What you do need though is a good quality mica. So you can buy those sets that put the bags of mica, but they're typically not as concentrated as you'll find if you purchase something like the Color Art pigments or the Just For You Online or Eye Candy, Color Berry. Those are the higher quality pigments, which is also why they cost more. Now you can use the other ones. I've just found that if I use a higher quality mica that the paste seems to um, have the same effect as if I would have actually purchased a paste. So good mica, critical. You also will want just part A, which is the resin of a brand. I'm going to use craft resin and I put mine into these squeeze bottles because it's so much easier to work with than lifting this each time. And then you're going to want some empty jars. Now one thing I will say on the jars, you want to try to find them ones that are leak proof because I have mine. Sometimes you know they'll sit on their side and it's not intentional, it just happens with the way that they're stacked. And if you don't have a leak proof jar, it's gonna leak and it's quite a mess, which is why a lot of mine have markings from other ones that have probably leaked on it. Um, and I do have two different sizes and you can pick the size that you want. You can go with like a one ounce or a two or a three ounce. And another thing is if you actually have old jars that you know are leak proof, like I have this color berry one and it has the leak proof thing in there, then you could also just repurpose a jar you already have. So that's also an option. Now. You have another option, which is a porcelain mortar and pestle or a glass. I started mine with this um, porcelain one, and as you can see, it gets stained really bad, and it's very difficult to keep clean. And even though I have cleaned this out with alcohol and all of that, I can still sometimes get transference of my color. So I did purchase a glass one, which is what I will be using today. Um, and these are not easy to find, the glass ones that actually have the pore spout, which is what I was looking for, because it makes it easier once you're finished with the paste to just be able to lift and pour, as opposed to having to scoop it out or something of that nature. So to get started, the way you could do this by measurements, you know, like, if you have um, a three ounce jar of mica, you could say that that is also, you would need about a cup of resin, but I like to do it by sight. And so I will just scoop my resin or my mica into the mortar and pestle and then I will grab my resin and I will just wet it by looking at it. So I want it to fully cover and be wet. And once it's about where it's covered and I can see some clear around the edges, then I stop and I come in with my mortar and just start swirling that around. And you want to make sure you do have contact with the base so that you know that you're actually grinding in that mica. That's important. And you're going to want to mix this for a few minutes. Don't just think it's already mixed because it looks mixed. It really does need a good, I would say, two, three minutes of pushing and swirling to make sure that you're getting all of that, the grinds. And then once you've actually finished with all of that, then you can pour it into your jar. And while you're doing it, you can tell if you need more, if you've ever worked with resin paste before, you will easily be able to tell if you need more resin or if you need to add more mica. And I think it really also, I found it depends. I, the reason I don't want to tell you a formula 
is because I found, depending on what mica I'm using, will depend on how much resin I will need to use. Some of the micas I use need more resin and others need less. So this one, the color art typically needs more resin. And I think it's because it's a larger green, but I'm not a scientist, so I couldn't say 100% that that's the reason. But I have just found that it does usually require a little more resin than eye candy, let's say. And I'll fast forward you through this as I continue to grind this. So once you think you're done, you want to grab a popsicle stick and then clean off your pestle. Now I could keep going and finish the rest of this off and all of that, but I'm showing this today. I actually have one already made of this, so this will actually be the second one, so I don't need to make any more than that. But I want to grab a pigment paste that I purchased, not one that I've made. Alright, so this is an eye candy pigment paste I actually purchased. If you look at this, you'll see the consistency. See how it kind of falls down? So when you're doing yours, you want to make sure it has a similar consistency. You don't want it too thick, but you also don't want it too thin. And this one, looking at the differences, you could actually add a little bit more resin. But that's also a good way to judge if you're not certain, is think of the fluidity of it and what it should be, and just make sure that yours is at that consistency. Because you could follow a formula and wind up with it not turning out to be a good pigment paste. You really need to just do it by look. So see how that's flowing better now. And by that, I mean it's not going in clumps. So when I pick it up, it, it'll easily fall off of that popsicle stick. And so that's it. You're done. Now you just want to put it into your leak-proof container. And here's where having the pour spout comes in handy. I'm going to grab my scraper that I normally use. I don't usually use a popsicle stick to get it out. I don't know why I am right now. Alright, so these little spatulas you can find at like the dollar store and that'll help you get that out a lot easier than that popsicle stick. I'm just going to take a paper towel with some isopropyl, just in case any transference was on this. Right. And then I'm going to put the lid. And then you can create labels for this as well, so that you can know when you made this. Because just, you know, as resin expires, so would this. Which is pretty easy to tell if you open it up you, and it's all dried out. You could try adding more resin to it, um, that might work, but you'd want to do that in your mortar um, and pestle because you need to grind it. But I'm going to show you the magic now of the glass. So if we had done this in that porcelain one, it would be stained for good. But with the glass, it should wipe clean. 
isopropyl. And make sure that whatever mortar and pestle you're using, you only use for crafts. The last thing you want to do is actually go cook with this now. That would not be healthy or advisable. And there you go, it's just like new again. And that way now you don't have to worry about cross-contamination of getting a color that you don't want accidentally merging with one of the, with whatever color you're doing. And you know, porcelain is porous and that it absorbs. Even if it's been kilned or whatever, it will still absorb the mica color as is evidenced by the way that looks. Now if you can find a porcelain one that's been sealed, that probably would be okay. I inadvertently purchased one that was not sealed. So either glass or sealed porcelain, mortar is what you really need. And the same thing with the pestle, make sure that the end is sealed. That's not to say you can't use this, you can. but. If you want easier cleanup, you'll definitely want to go with something sealed or glass. I actually looked all over Amazon for a mortar and pestle that was not porous, that was sealed, that was glass. And there's a lot of options, but the ones that I actually thought would work were quite expensive on Amazon. So I did find this one um, on another site. I'll have to look up where I purchased it and I'll put a link um, for anyone that might be interested in purchasing the same one. It was probably half the price of what I was seeing on Amazon. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed the video and that this helped you to learn how to make your own pigment paste. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and press the bell to be alerted to future videos.